Have you already instrumented your .NET Kafka client? Nowadays, OpenTelemetry is everywhere, so I have been instrumenting some of my applications. And doing it for APIs, databases, it was extremely easy until I got to a roadblock. And the question was, how will I instrument my Kafka producers and consumers? Unfortunately, there was no easy solution for that until now. So in this video, I will show you how you can use Kafka Flow to achieve that, how does it work under the hood, but also how you can take advantage of it. So let me start by sharing with you the source code that I have here, the sample that we'll be working on, that by the way, you can grab the source code as a patron as always. So in the client's API, I have a simple API with a single endpoint, this post clients that is producing to a Kafka topic, a given message. So every single time that I have a new client, I will create, I will produce a new event that I am naming it as created client and I'm producing it to a given topic. And then I have here a second API that is this marketing API that also has an endpoint to list clients. And it's doing it through a catalog that is built on a database. In this case, it's Postgres. But the interesting part is that the catalog is being filled based on those events that the client's API is producing. So that means that I need a Kafka consumer that will react to those events, will subscribe to that topic, and will start adding to my Postgres database every single new client. And as you can see right here, we already have some instrumentation in place. We already instrumented some things like, for example, the ASP.NET Core instrumentation, but also the NPG SQL instrumentation as well. So now let's run these two APIs. So let's start my clients and also start the marketing API. On both APIs, you can find here two files with the name api.http that has a set of HTTP requests. So let's start by posting a new client into the client's API, done. And as we can see right here, we created a new event for that client and we assigned to that client the ID 90D3. If we now go to the api.http for the marketing API and we run that request, we can see it in the response that is a list response. We can find here the client that we just created and as you can see, the code, the ID, starts with 90v3, the one that we just created. What does that mean? It means that an event was produced, and now this second API is consuming those events and adding it to a database. If now I go to Jaeger that I'm using to collect those metrics so I can see those traces, you can see here already the service clients API and the marketing API as well. So let's take a look at what we can see there. So if we find the traces for the clients, you can see right here the posts that we just executed. So if we drill down into it, the only thing that you can see is that there was a post. We don't know anything else about it, okay? We are not aware that this produced the message to Kafka. So if we go into the other one, the marketing API, and we do exactly the same thing. We will see here multiple traces, but they are not related, right? So I know here that there was an access to Postgres that was when I, when I was consuming that message, I had to write to Postgres and that is here, but I'm not familiar with the consumer of Kafka. But also I have here another one that this one looks complete. So so in this case, we can see right here that every single time that we do the get clients, we'll go through the API. The API will just call the Postgres database and return a response. So wh what I would like to see now is a message flowing from the clients to being handled in the marketing API. And the question is, how can we do that? So let's get back into our source code. And the first thing that we'll do is to install a package that is another package for Kafka Flow. And the name is this one right here, kafkaflow.opentelemetry. We'll add it to the client's API and also to the marketing API. Now that I have it, I have to give the instructions to Kafka Flow that it should collect those metrics. So 
how do I do that? With Kafka flow, the way that you define that is through the definition of Kafka flow itself. So what you will do is that you will go into your configuration of, for example, the Kafka flow hosted service, or when you do the add Kafka, and then you simply go there and do the dot add open telemetry instrumentation. So this part is done. So simply by doing this, every single request that is being handled or produced will already produce traces, but we need to collect them. And to collect them, the thing that we need to do is to go into our add open telemetry definition. And there we need to define that we want to collect a given source. So when we are doing the with tracing in this case, what I will be doing is that I will say, okay, please add the source Kafka flow instrumentation dot activity source name. And if you are using the automatic instrumentation of .NET and you don't have this definition in your code, the name of the activity source it's in the documentation is quite easy to find. But in this approach is something as simple as this. So let's do exactly the same thing into the marketing API. We add the source there, and also we need to go to our add Kafka flow hosted service and do the add open telemetry instrumentation. And for that, I will start the client's API once again and the marketing API as well. And now that I have both of them running, let me just produce a different client so we can see it in the results. This time we create this one that starts with a seven. Let's go to the API HTTP for the marketing API and run the request there. And now we can see two clients and one is he, the other one is Guilherme. The ID starts with first one with the ninth, second one with the seven, as we have seen before. And now the interesting part is going to Jaeger to see what we have there. Adding back into Jaeger, let's go into the client's API first. And what we can see now is that if we compare these post clients that we can see right here, this one with this one that was the first one that we created, is that now we have something else here. So we can see that the number of spans is bigger than the previous one, right? So one span on the previous one, and now we have four. So if we drill down into the most recent one, now we can see the complete tree of the processment of this request. So for this client, we add a post into the client's API. Then we can see that there's a client's created publish. That means that there was a, a producer of Kafka to this client's created. And then we have a client's created process. So on the topic client's created, we have a consumer. So this is the definition that you have in the protocol. When you have this type of messaging systems, you have the publish and the process. So once again, we are not using the same terms as we are used to. It's not a publish or subscribe, or in Kafka, it's not a producer and a consumer. It's a publish and a process. And then you can see that this API at a, a consumer running, picked up that thing, and then it forwarded it into Postgres. And this is extremely important to see the complete path of the execution of a request. And how does that work? How can I relate something that happened inside of my first API with something that is happening in a second API when I'm reacting to a message? So in OpenTelemetry, you have the concept of propagators. And here in the source code of Kafka flow, you can see the code doing the propagation. So we are creating this propagation context that will then be attached as a message header. And then the consumer can look into that thing and unpack it to rebuild the context. So that is the thing that will make those activities relate to each other. And that is one thing that nowadays you don't have out of the box when using Kafka with .NET. And here you can see that we have done that with just two lines of code in each service. So in other words, if you want to have instrumentation in your Kafka producers and Kafka consumers, and we use Kafka flow in both hands, in the producer and in the consumer, you just need to install the package and define those two lines to add instrumentation to Kafka flow and also the add source to OpenTelemetry. The next question that you might have is, how do I set tags 
into those spans that we just seen. Unfortunately, at the current version of Kafka Flow, you still can't do it out of the box. There's one way to do something like that, but it's not the same. I, I will show you in a, in a moment. However, there's this issue that you can see right here and you can find the link in the description where some people are already asking for it. So just go there, give your thumbs up, say that it's a good idea to implement and eventually you will see it. So what's the thing that I'm mentioning? Imagine that in your application, when you get, for example, new event coming from that topic, now with Kafka flow, you have an handler. So you have that system of middlewares and the message will eventually go into an handler. And for example, in this case, I'm handling messages of clients, right? What if I want to set to that message handling a tag with something like a message header, or for example, in this case, let's say that I want to set the client ID as a tag. So as I told you, you currently can do it. However, what you can do is to create a new, to start a new activity that will basically be a new spawn inside of that one. And on that one, you have control to do whatever you want, and you will still see that tree cascading down there. It's not perfect, in my opinion, but we'll get there if you go into that issue and you give the thumbs up. But let me show you how you can do that. I will start by creating here a folder that I'll call telemetry. I will create a class named marketing instrumentation. And on that class, I will add a static property that will be this marketing activity source, and I will give it a name. So the other thing that I will do is that I will convert this class into static. So that means that now when I'm handling the message, I can go there and say, okay, using bar activity equals to marketing instrumentation dot marketing activity source dot start activity. So if I want to set a tag, example client dot ID should be equal to the message dot ID, I can do it. And in the same way that we are doing it right here inside of the handler, we can do another thing. We could create, for example, another handler for this that will run before in the pipeline and first run that one specific for open telemetry and then delegate the rest of the work into here. Or for example, we can create a middleware through Kafka flow that will react to every single message and do this type of thing for every single message coming in. And then you have a single middleware for all your message and link regarding open telemetry. And another thing that you could do right here is for example, let's imagine that we want to throw an exception if the name length is lower than two, okay? Stupid use case, but let, let's say that it's something like this. And we'll throw something like invalid data exception or something like that, invalid name. Here we could do something like this. For example, we will do a try, catch that exception, and then before throwing it again, we could do something as simple as activity dot record exception, and we provide here the exception. This will create an event associated to this activity. And this way we capture that that exception happened. Before we run this thing, we just need to do one thing that is going to our program.cs. And now on the definition of open telemetry, when we are defining the sources that we want to watch for, now we should do the marketing.api.core.telemetry and we will need the constant here that I forgot to do it. So let's go back into the activity source and refactor this, convert it to a public static string. So let's change the order here of those two attributes. And now the next thing is starting those APIs, creating a new event to see the changes being reflected on Jaeger. So let's do it. Okay, I will create a new event. And if now we go to Jaeger, we can see here that we have a new event that was triggered seconds ago. We can drill down into it. And now we can see that we have an extra span. That is this one, this handle one. That is the one that we just created. So if we go there and we click there, we can see that we have a new tag that is the client.id, the one that we just created. So what does this mean? It means that we couldn't do the thing that ideally I would like, that is associating tags to this span that is already here, but you can always use this start activity to start relating other things that you want, okay? At least for now, until we have that extension point to add new 
tags, new attributes to the existing activities. So the other example that I wanted to show you, the one that we built the exception one. So let's go back into our API file. And this time let's change the name to something like only a G if we triggered it and we go back into Jaeger, find the traces. Now you can see here that we have right here something marking this one as an exception. We can, you can even see here that there wasn't one heifer. So if we drill down into that one, we can see that, okay, we have, we are capturing those errors and we know that it was on that consumer that the error was triggered. This is extremely useful. And as you can see, it's extremely easy to put this in place. And you might be surprised on how simple the process was. And if you are not familiar with Kafka flow, I get it. So what if I told you that you can use this type of simplistic approach where you are just defining through a, a fluent API how your application works, you can do that to build your consumers and your producers using Kafka flow. And for that, in this video right here, I will show you how you can start building your first Kafka.NET applications using Kafka flow in a matter of minutes.